Welcome. Welcome to the Rick Helps Real Estate Show, my weekly recap that I try to have every Sunday night. Haven't missed one in about five weeks, so let's hang in there. <laughs> it was an interesting week uh, when it came to rates. Didn't really move sales yet. I'm not seeing any numbers that are jumping up and down. People are just kind of sitting on their hands in this market. Buyers are saying, you know, I'm happy for you, but I can't afford it. A um, little pressure in the uh, upper end of the market that I'm going to share with you. But as far as interest rates, there were some events this week that just to put it in a little ball, it was the economic data was not as rosy as it was. And so when whenever bad news is abundant, then rates uh, make a move down. And they went down about a quarter of a point, which is a pretty significant move in a week for rates to go down that low. And there was also good news on the auctioning of uh, the bonds on uh, Thursday, I believe it was Thursday or Friday with $25 billion worth that they thought they were going to be hard to unload. And lo and behold, there were a lot of buyers that stepped up, kind of surprised everybody. That put downward pressure on rates as well. It's, it's a complicated scenario. I won't bore you with it here, uh, but it was good for rates. So, But hang on to your hats because Wednesday's coming and that's the CPI number. So if CPI comes in, consumer price index higher than estimates, all bets are off. Rates are probably going to fly back up close to eight again, uh, but it all depends on how far off they are. The, the bond traders are looking for indications that the central bank will feel better about lowering their overnight rates. And right now they're dug in like a tick and they're not going to do it. So the talk of having four to six rate cuts this year are dashed. Um, Fannie Mae has revised their estimates to say that they expect us to be about 6.1 as we get closer to the end of the year. Most everybody's in that range optimistically, you know, that's a full percentage down from where we are right now. Um, but, uh, Again, it's just like everything else. They're just kind of guessing what's going to happen. If if the CPI numbers don't improve, I think 6.1 is going to be hard to, hard to hit. But we'll see what happens on Wednesday. Now, if it comes in lower than projections, you know, then maybe the 7.16 that you're seeing on there sticks, or perhaps we end up a little bit lower. So Wednesday's a big day. Now, CPI, when it comes to the central bank, they, they concentrate more on a different measurement of inflation, but the bond market really focuses on CPI. So it's going to be a very interesting Wednesday. I'm sure you've got other things to do than watch the CPI data, but uh, if you're into that, that's the day. It's not really changing things much out there. You can see the Chandler here. As far as our consumer, our Cromford market index, I'm stuck on CPI. Um, we've had some improvements, but they're small, 1%, 2%. So there's really nothing to see there. They're, they're not reacting too much. What I do like to point out here, though, is our, our active listings are flatlining. So any expectations that we were going to spike up for the summer are kind of right there where you thought we were going to have 5.5% interest rates. It's just not happening. I just don't see us coming up there to 19, 20,000 in the summer. Now, I have said in the past that if, if we see us approaching on this number here, 17,000 before summer, before summer, then we'll probably hit 20,000 by the end of summer. Um, but it's not happening, folks. It's just it's just not there. The other thing to look for, too, is um, in the summer in Phoenix, June actually is not a bad month uh, for people selling their homes. It's a terrible month to move. Uh, you call your friends and ask them to help you move in June. They're going to tell you they uh, they have to arrange their sock drawer or um, they were going to paint their uh, their their motor home do anything to keep from helping you moving when it's over 115 degrees. So even though nobody will help you move, there are people that will buy your house and there are people that like to sell because schools start at the end of July out here. So June is good. And I say that because you're not going to see inventory spike up. If they grow, they're going to be, they're going to be gobbled up. So, but uh, you'll have to hire people to help you move. I'm not going to help you move. And I have a truck. Um, so, <laughs> Price changes per week. Um, they've gone up a little bit. They're still not anywhere near where they used to be here when the I buyers were dumping their inventory, when interest rates went up and everybody panicked. But they are in the increase, folks. But here's the surprising thing that I see. Now, I'm going to talk about price cuts versus actual price per square foot going down. So let's go anything over $1 million here on this chart and show you something that's, like I say, surprising to me. Look at how many price cuts there are. Now, let me clarify this. These are the number 
of price cuts. This is not the amount of the price cut. In other words, we're going through a period now where sales in the above million has been pretty good. You've seen snippets that say $8 million house sold in Scottsdale, $20 million house sold in Cave Creek, carefree. But um, that adds a level of optimism that makes people price their homes probably well above market value. Doesn't mean the value of that home has come down. It has in some markets, talking to Jason up in Seattle, Seeing a lot of pricing pressure, people are giving up up there. And uh, could that happen here? I'm watching it closely. They're saying, well, I thought I could get this and I can't. I'm getting this. But guess what? I'm still 15% above last year. That's not an alarm, but it says, okay, you can't just price into the stratosphere and expect everybody to buy. And that's what we're seeing in that, in that price. So, you know, they're saying, I think I can get this. And the market's going, nice try, pal. You're not going to get that. So when we look at our Cromford market index, it's kind of muddling along on the floor here. It's kind of flat. You want to watch for these big swings. So, you know, right here, when the market index was going up in 2020, well, that's when things got into the silly season of 2021. It was good. The index was way up. It was the leading indicator down here that things were about, were about to get really good as far as your ability to sell your home. The opposite came true in 2022. So when you watch these, especially when you see a big gap like this in a week going down, that's the canary in the coal mine for you. When you get down here and there's just little blips and it's not doing much, it's not a whole lot changing. And it's driven by supply. Supply is starting to come up, as I just showed you in the last chart. Not much. In fact, if I look at my seven-day moving average, you can see that new listings this week went down a little bit. New contracts kind of stayed flat. So nothing standing out there. Demand is up and flat. So when it comes to the market index, not much going on. Who's buying the homes right now? This is a busy chart, but I'll clear it up here for you. 73.8% of homes sold so far this year are owner occupied. 10.9% are second homes down from where we were during the pandemic where people are buying second homes like crazy. But only at 12.4%. What's really changed is investor homes are down 13.9% versus 21% in 2022. And so that number is down. And you can see there on the bottom, high buyers are less than 1%. They were cranking at 5.7 in 2022. And in 2021, Open Door, OfferPad, and Zillow were out there like crazy. Zillow finally bailed out. Offer pad sales are so bad that they aren't even listed on the stock market anymore. They've been delisted. Open doors sales are so bad that their stock has gone from $43 to $2.20. And the analysts are not saying it's a good time to buy their stock. So I don't know how long they're going to be around. They may hang on for a long time. I have never understood that business model. Uh, they want to make it easy for you to sell your home. In 2021, they were great. They were overpaying. People loved them. You're going to give me what for my house? Where's the pen? Um, but I looked at it and said, well, if they can't make money during a time when home prices are going straight up, how are they going to make money if they're flatlined? Now, home prices are still going up, my friends, uh, which is surprising to many, including me. Um, and they're still losing money. So, you know, they, they've got to make a margin on your home. So they have to give you an offer that's good enough for you. and profitable for them. And as of yet, they haven't been able to do that. So I don't see the business model growing. 6% is actually a pretty big market share that they had at one point. And uh, they were shaking things up. Now they're barely there. Offer open door and offer pad um, are not really offering much more as far as benefits from just going to a regular investor. Um, and investors, keep in mind, if you're selling to an investor, they got to make the margins too. They're going to say, I think when I'm done fixing this house up, I can sell it for $500,000, but it's going to cost me $45,000 to fix things. And then it's going to, I'm going to have this much money and in interest I'm going to have to pay and commissions and closing costs. So I can offer you this. So they start at what it's going to be worth and they subtract and they say, here's what I'll give you. And you look at that and go, that's an insulting offer. I can get 480,000 on the market. Well, you probably can, but I'm telling you what, the math looks like if I'm going to buy it as an investor, I can close you out in seven days. So there's uh, what I call convenience sales. You know, oh, it's convenient. I can close out in seven days. I won't make as much equity. Okay, I'll take it. 
That's what offered had an open door offered and, but they were doing it at a very high rate. So this week, make sure you pay attention to uh, stay close to your lender. It's going to be impossible for them to tell you where they think rates are going to go on Wednesday. Really are. You've got to make the decision. Do I lock Monday or Tuesday or do I roll the dice and wait for rates to go down even more? So that's where your lender is going to have to be looking at the charts, following the bond market very closely. Try not to get burned because uh, if the CPI comes in hot, you're not going to be facing lower rates on Wednesday and Thursday. So it's kind of everybody wants the top and everybody wants the bottom, but sometimes you got to be happy with that chunk out of the middle. So if you're happy with this rate that you see that we got this week, my recommendation would be to lock and don't stress over Wednesday. Now, if you're working with a mortgage broker and they, you do lock or they, they, they can get you out of it perhaps on Thursday if they need to. So it depends on who you're writing your loan with. So pay close attention to it. This is going to be a wild week. I will be on probably Wednesday night to discuss it, just like every other realtor and lender out there. So in the meantime, everybody have a great week. Take care.